Hi everyone, it's Simon here on Sunday the 8th of January. Um, got an update for this week and the following week for you. Um, huge, huge difference between uh, various different models today and notably between the two that I show you most often on here, the GFS model and the ECMWF model. More of that in just a moment. Um, here's North Atlantic Oscillation for the coming couple of weeks from the GFS. You see it bouncing around neutral, trying to get back into positive territory, hinting that the winds generally are coming in from the Atlantic, but not strong so this strong westerly that we've had uh, over recent weeks is certainly going to be giving way and looks as if it's going to be middle to the end of this week when that really takes place and then we stay with this kind of westerly flow as far as the GFS is concerned. Um, On to the Arctic Oscillation and uh, this is the measure of the winds around the Arctic Circle. Gives us a good idea um, that if we've got strong westerly winds and we're in a positive index then that means that the cold air tends to stay trapped to the north. Uh, of the Arctic Circle but when they go neutral and negative it tends to be able to drain southwards so although we've got that westerly wind look coming across the Atlantic notice how the Arctic Oscillation is bouncing around in neutral territory trying to get down into negative as well so they're in there this cooler weather slipping its way south and I'm still going with this cooler uh, certainly quite a shock in conditions after next weekend so sometime uh, after the 14th stroke 15th of January things be getting a little bit uh, cooler now we'll do the full detail for the week ahead in just a mo, but this is how the next seven day shapes up as far as the models are concerned temperature wise. So this is from today through to next Sunday. British Isles look generally above normal and I'd go along with this. That looks per perfectly reasonable to me, as does much of Northern Europe. It's been like this for so long now that temperatures have been above normal throughout much of Central and Eastern Europe too, but below normal look out towards uh, Spain, Portugal and the western parts of France. But this has just been an exceptionally mild winter out in the east so far. Cold too down in the Balkans, look down towards Greece and also towards Turkey during this week. Now as far as precipitation is concerned, well no shocks here for the British Isles with uh, the expected high pressure that we're going to be seeing across the top of us. Uh, you can see here, look, that um, we've got uh, rainfall levels well below normal across much of the British Isles. Uh, these red colours here indicating those well below normal uh, conditions. Above normal across Central and Eastern Europe, or around about normal at least, this is due to low pressure that's going to be going in there from the jet stream which gets pushed north and then dips southwards through these western east western parts of central Russia bringing the more unsettled conditions there. Just interesting to note look uh, as well the comparison between the two weeks. This is the actual rainfall forecast from this Sunday to next Sunday the 15th and uh, notice just virtually nothing across eastern parts of the UK. Most of it across western coast, plenty across central parts of Europe. But then into the second week look, notice how much more unsettled the British Isles is forecast to become as far as the GFS is concerned. This is different to the ECMWF, I would stress that. Um, but look, in the second week, so this is the week running from Monday the 16th to the 22nd, look how much more unsettled it becomes. Now I actually favour the GFS on this one. Normally I don't, if there's a discrepancy between the GFS and the ECMWF, I tend to lean more towards the ECMWF. But on this occasion I'm going with the GFS. What is interesting is that Captain Barbell you'll see posting here on the weatherweb.net site. He actually favours more the ECMWF solution. So what you're seeing here, folks, is a battle between two meteorologists as to how this pattern actually shapes out. It's going to be absolutely fascinating. We agree on colder conditions the week after next. We just don't agree, I think, on how it's actually going to uh, transpire. So um, this is the week ahead in more detail for you. And um, this is from uh, weatheronline.co.uk. The times up here look in the top left hand corner. And this is for this morning. This is the forecast from the GFS for this morning. Look, there is the ridge of high pressure through the British Isles, keeping conditions generally dry. A weak front just moving across northern and western Scotland this afternoon, bringing a few spots of rain there. But for most, we stay under high pressure. Through tomorrow, we stay under high pressure for most of us with dry conditions. This front just nudging south through Scotland into northern England and Ireland in the morning, bringing a little bit of cloud and perhaps some outbreaks of rain, but dry weather moving into Scotland and staying dry across southern parts of the country too. Through Monday night into Tuesday, I think frost is going to be developing, particularly across England, Wales, southern parts of Scotland, with clear skies, minus twos, minus threes possible, but some rain and stronger winds across northern and western parts of Scotland. 
and then through Tuesday well they're uh, quite a, a, a frosty start to the morning Tuesday has always been one of those days to cause a little bit of problem because it may be that we get some fog patches developing across England and also Wales but uh, not sure exactly how extensive they'll be I think they will clear and they will find sunny spells developing I think some uh, cloud and outbreaks of rain affecting northern Scotland with a breeze blowing there I think through a Tuesday into Wednesday, high pressure stays with us. Although, notice what happens into Wednesday. A weak front again moving into Scotland, affecting the west of Scotland, Northern Ireland, mostly bringing some outbreaks of rain here. Cloudy for eastern Scotland, northeastern England, but dry and fairly bright across southern England and Wales. Although, again, this problem with fog patches, particularly after an early morning frost. Overnight into Wednesday, um, I think that could be quite a chilly one with a frost developing across uh, England and Wales once again. Not severe, minus three perhaps as a low, could touch a minus four in more sheltered places. To the north though, more cloud and more outbreaks of rain affecting western Scotland. The wind tending to keep temperatures above freezing here. And then through Thursday itself, so we find cloud and outbreaks of rain moving across the north. But look, the high trying to get back in again. And I think Thursday night at the moment, looking like being a chilly night. Minus four is possible across a large part of the country. Although the flow is coming in from the south or the southeast. Um, <clears throat> I think fog could be a problem and could become quite widespread too. For England, Wales, southern and eastern parts of Scotland. Need to watch that. But up towards northern and western parts of the country, I think any fog patch is uh, restricted. And they will be lifting fairly quickly. And then into uh, next weekend, well, what we tend to find is that an area of low pressure tries to move in uh, through Friday night to Saturday. It tries to shift things around. Look, here's the front coming in through Saturday itself, and it brings some outbreaks of rain with it. So I think a change starts to take place into next Sunday. And then after that, we tend to find that a ridge of high pressure builds in, but then collapses away on the Monday as the jet stream becomes re-established. And then look what happens. Areas of low pressure are going to be moving in from the Atlantic. They'll bring cool conditions with them. And I think it's these that bring the wet and the windy weather for the week following next and cooler too. I actually think this area of low pressure will be further south. So the lows will be running somewhere southern Ireland through southern Wales, through southern parts of England, bringing the cooler conditions. And I think we could be seeing some sleet or snow certainly across the high ground of Scotland and Northern England at times, perhaps some snow too across the high ground of Wales and Southern England as these pressure systems move through. Although I'm not expecting a whiteout, don't panic, this is not going to be a whiteout situation, it's just that it looks as if it will become probably two or three degrees cooler than it is at the present time. And of course what I was going to show you was the comparison between the two models. Now I've put it on here somewhere, where about is it? This is the comparison between the GFS and the um, ECMWF model from Ryan Maui's site. So we've got at the top here, this is the 500 millibar flow from the ECMWF and the GFS. The GFS is on the top here and the um, ECMWF is on the bottom. Now these are both for the same day. So these are for 240 hours from midnight last night. So this is for the 18th of January, which I make as Wednesday the 18th of January and look at the difference between the two. GFS, jet stream, screaming across the Atlantic here, very strong jet across southern parts of the British Isles, northern France. Much cooler conditions on the northern side. Most of the areas of low pressure and strong winds would be tracking across southern parts of the UK through central parts of Europe, with the north here becoming cold. Now, compare that, look, with the ECMWF which has a huge ridge of high pressure building across northern and western parts of the country into the Atlantic, a blocking area of high pressure bringing in much cooler east to northeast winds across the country and dry weather with the jet stream splitting north and the jet stream splitting south. Both of these are entirely possible. It's going to be interesting to see which one develops. At the moment I'm going more towards the GFS. As I say, Captain Bob is more down towards the bottom. But this is a fascinating battle that's taking place between these models and we'll keep our watching it over the next few days. So thanks for watching once again. This site is all kept free of charge by the adverts you see around. So if you see an advert you like, do click on it, go through to the advertiser. It generates revenue for us and it shows the advertiser that you're interested in their products too. So once again, thanks for watching and do keep the sun shining.